May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us, especially this morning, but also in all time. I'd like to welcome everyone that's come for the uh, service this morning, those that came for the German service, those that have come now for the English service, those that have come as friends, as relatives, for those that come here, we like to bid everyone a very hearty welcome. It's always a blessing to see people come that are interested in the Word of God, that are, have a desire to hear the Word of God, and we uh, it's our wish and prayer that today we may, be, may receive of the Word of God and that we receive the blessing of the Word of God as we've done in the German message uh, to give us encouragement, to give us life, and to give us that assurance that we have peace and joy in our life, that we as Christians can go and live for the Lord and that, he, uh, that we can have, that, that we will be a witness and a testimony for those that are on the outside. For the uh, um, message uh, this morning, I have a little different message. I'm thankful for the message we have in the, more, uh, the German message of encouragement. But I have a different message. We are planning to have the bishop election come Friday night at 7 o'clock. And, um, to, uh, and I'd like to have a message here to prepare us for that election, that we do it prayerfully, that God can give his guidance and direction and give us a person, a man, that will be willing to uh, uh, fill the qualifications for a bishop and to, um, that, we can, uh, that he, God, through him, can give guidance and direction to us that the church can grow and um, be uh, further established, that this church will stay and stand on the rock and foundation of Jesus Christ, that we will not go off that rock either to this side or to that side or forwards or backwards, but that we'll stand on the rock of Jesus Christ uh, till that time when he comes. And I'd like to read um, a portion of scripture here uh, which uh, has to do with the, uh, the qualifications or today in today's language we say the job description of a bishop. And we find that written in 1 Timothy chapter 3, the first um, seven verses. So 1 Timothy chapter 3, where Paul admonishes uh, Timothy to look for men and, and to uh, to give men that will have leadership in the church, men that will qualify as men of God to do that service. So 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. I'll read it in English first, and then I'll do it in German later. This is a true saying. If a man desired the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good quality, or good quality, I'm sorry, good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy for filthy lucre, but patience, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into the to reproach and snare of the devil. Fire of the reading, and I'd like to read it in German. As es gewisslich war, so jemand ein Bischofsamt begehrt, der begehrt ein kästliches Werk. Es soll ein Bischof, aber, es soll aber ein Bischof, unstreflich sein, eines Weibes Mann, Nichtern, mäßig, sättig, gasfrei und lehrhaft. Nicht ein Weinsäufer, nicht raufen, nicht unehrliche Hantierung treiben, sondern gelinde, gelinde nicht zänkisch, nicht geizig, der sein eigenen Haus wohl vorstehe, gehorsame Kinder habe mit aller Ehrbarkeit. So aber jemand sein eigenes Haus nicht weiß vorzustehen, wie wird er die Gemeinde Gottes versorgen? Nicht ein Neuling? auf das ich nicht, dass er sich nicht aufblase und ins Urteil der Lässers falle. Er muss aber auch ein gutes Zeugnis haben von denen, die da draußen sind, dass er nicht falle in den Läster, dem Lästern in Schmach und Streck. That, that far, as far the reading of God's Word. Before we go on, let us pause for a time of prayer. 
Our Father in heaven, we come to you, and we want to thank you for this day that you've given us. Thank you for the opportunity that you have uh, given us to gather in your house in your name, that we can have the peace and the freedom in this country to live our faith. Father, we thank you for this. We take this so for granted, but we know there are so many people, so many of your people that do not have this freedom. And we pray for them. Help them to look up to you and to stand steadfast for you. Father, we thank you for the uh, church. We thank you for the blessing that you've given us. And Father, we pray now that you guide us and direct us during this message and that you uh, provide for us in the church for leadership and the future, Father, that it, this church will stand on the rock and foundation of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for your guidance and direction. We pray that you pour your Holy Spirit upon your servant, that he can present your word according to your will, for your honor, for your glory, and for the building up of your church. Father, we pray for your servant that he'll have the health and the strength to present your word. Father, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, we want to look at the years have crept on, and I'd say the years have crept on on me too. I cannot keep up with all the activities that the church, that are going on in the church, and I feel um, the years have gone on. The time has come to elect another bishop to take part in carrying this load. And as I said last time, that if and when the Lord calls me home, and I'm looking forward to that when the Lord will call me home, that there will be leadership in the church. And, it's, um, and we've come to that point. And as long as the Lord gives me health and strength, I want to serve him. Maybe now not in the uh, present capacity as much, but sharing that capacity, but I still want to serve as long as, as I, I have the health and the strength and the breath to do so. Somebody once asked me, when do you retire? I say, my retire is out of, retirement is out of this world. I'll not retire in this world, but my retirement is out of this world, in the, in the world to come. Now comes the hard part for us, to talk about the qualification for a bishop. I know and it falls on me. I have to speak for, for myself and it also falls on, on those that are candidates. It's not so easy to talk about. But um, today it's more, well the first part will be more on the qualifications. The second part will be on the congregation. But um, the first part, and I want to remind you today to a large extent, I'm speaking to myself, and I know I, uh, when I make a message for all of you, I have two prayers that I first, I, what I pray first before I sit down to make any message. And the first prayer is, Lord, protect me that there will be nothing of me in that message. The second prayer, Lord, that that message will speak first to me, then to the congregation. And uh, today it's uh, especially to, uh, to bring this across. It's not that, that simple, it's not that easy. I feel so much I'm preaching to myself. That this is the first part of the message. The second part will be somewhat different. Uh, <clears throat> the election of a bishop is to be done prayerfully and it's been done much prayer, time spent in prayer, and this is for each one of us, not just for the bishop and the ministers, but this is much prayer for the congregation. God can, the prayer and such, that God can do his choosing, even, do God does his choosing, even when you cast the ballot, even when the brethren come and cast the ballot, that God through that can, uh, uh, can do the choosing. And I want to look at some of the things that we have. First Timothy chapter 3, and I'd like to go through some of these verses, uh, 1 to 7, and uh, some of the qualifications that God wants of that person that he, uh, he wants to accept for leadership in, uh, in the church. When we look in the, the Old Testament time, there were people that God chose, and he chose them and they had to have certain qualifications. And we look at Moses was called, Joshua was called, the prophets were called. They were called prophets at that time. But I, I believe we can say they would also qualify as bishops because they were the people to whom God would speak 
and then they would present that to the people. The office of a bishop, tells us here, is a good work. It's a high calling. It's a special calling. But it also, as I said before, it's a calling with a very special responsibility. It's the bishop, calling of a bishop is not into a higher position, not into a higher class. No, the fa- calling of a bishop is to, uh, the calling to a greater responsibility. And I wish that you as congregation would see, not us as people that are higher, um, higher people or uh, upper people or whatever, but that you would see in us the response, the greater responsibility that God has given us. As example, as I said, the prophets and, the, and so on, and God reveals himself to them, and that God can reveal himself to that person, and that that person uh, can reveal God's word to the congregation. And then we look at some of the qualification that uh, Paul tells Timothy to look for, uh, for a bishop. He says he must be blameless, the husband of one wife. Yes, it's of, of one wife, not of many wives, as it was there at that time, but one that was there uh, with a, a wife, we would say today, a good marriage relationship, and vigilant, and he should be sober, vigilant that he would observe and uh, realize and notice the things that are going on to be sober, think clearly of good behavior, a behavior that can be looked up to for others, and we'll get to that later, and given to hospitality, and then also apt to, uh, apt to teach. Then uh, these are some of the qualifications to look for when we cho- do that choosing, when we do that voting. But then Paul also gives uh, Timothy some advice what should not be in that, uh, in that qualification or what uh, should not be in that man's life. And he says, and that's verse 3, not given to wine, not uh, to alcohol, to, uh, and not a striker, not uh, trying to gain wherever he could and at the expense of others, not greedy for filthy lucre. Yes, we all have to make our living. We have to have uh, our living but not to be greedy at the expense of others to see how much we can get out of this world, but for a bishop to see how much he can put in, and I wouldn't say the world, but put in to the congregation, to be patient and um, have time, not a brawler and not covetous, uh, covetous, not uh, um, boasting and bragging, not covetousness, not, not, not just looking for himself, but for, for the well-being of others. Then number four, he tells us of a bishop, one that rules his own house well, having his children subject with all gravity. Yes, we would say, and I'd like to use this once again, a good relationship in his home, a marriage relationship with the family, and he uses this, and he says, if he cannot control his family or have his family in subjection to the Lord, how will he do be able to do that, that to the church. Yes, to, uh, to have that and, and uh, to practice that, that relationship with his family to the Lord. And I, I'm reminded of, just now, of Joshua 24, verse 15, where Joshua says to the uh, congregation, he was up in age already too, and, and it was a sort of his, not exactly final address or farewell address, yet it was to the close of his um, as a leadership, he says, choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It was not just for him, but he wanted to serve the Lord. And uh, we, uh, we know, and we go on to number five, as his home will be, so the church will be. My friends, there's a responsibility, and we'll come to it later, to pray for us as leaders, as bishop but also as ministers, that we will have that leadership in the home that we can give leadership in the church. As the, church, the ministers is, so will, also, will the church be also. Not a novice, not one that's newly come to Christ, not one that is inexperienced, but one that has experience. Because if there's not experience, very often 
how should I say, it goes to their head, and their head becomes so heavy that it uh, starts going down. My friends, not a novice. And then he says in number seven, the last one, he says, a bishop must have a good report to those that are outside. To have a report that people love on the outside, even those that are not in the congregation, that they will say, have respect and see that this man has some uh, qualifications or some uh, attributes, some uh, uh, habits in his life that others can look up to. I know this is a tall order. This is a great job description. And if we just look at it that way, we'd say, how can this happen? How can I do this? And I know if I look for myself, so often I come short. But I, as we had be, uh, heard in the German message, God is a God of love. He's for us, and he forgives, and he uh, cleans, and he gives me uh, opportunity. He gives me uh, strength to keep on going. This is it's a hard, uh, hard to say, a uh, hard uh, message for us. But then we want to look at this. Now the, there is the other side of the uh, qualifications for a bishop, and that is the church. Now the church is there. It has a responsibility. Uh, um, or the minister, uh, the bishop, has a, a responsibility to pray for the congregation that uh, God will uh, give and endow that man, be watchmen for your souls. Yes, to pray, but also for the congregation to pray, to give us a man who will be a watchman for the, uh, for the, for the people. And I would say a watchman to be a watchman for your soul, for every one of our souls. When we read in Ezekiel 3, and, uh, chapter 3 and also chapter 17, it says, I've set you as a watchman. You watch, and then you warn, and then if the person does not accept warning, then uh, it, it's up to that person. But if the, uh, the person is not warned, that responsibility lies on the watchman. He said, that blood will I require from your hand. My friends, that you see the responsibility uh, of the uh, bishop or the ministers, excuse me, and uh, that you pray that they can use this office as the Lord calls. And then another one that we have in Hebrews chapter 13, where, tell, where Paul, or well, we don't, we're not sure if Paul wrote the Hebrews, we believe, but it says, Obey them that have the rule over you, submit yourselves. For they watch over your souls as though that they give, have to give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief. But well, this is not good for you. My friends, the church has a responsibility to um, pray for those that they can have that, that they can do that with joy, that they can do that with, uh, with anticipation, that they can have the encouragement. And all these things... They have to do with the well-being of our souls, and I'd like to say the well-being of our souls, of your soul. Oh, this has to do with that, and to a certain extent, yes, as we heard the, uh, the salvation comes from Jesus, but to lead us to that, it will depend on what we do with the message that we receive, where we will spend eternity, in heaven or in hell. Now you may think, Second part, you've gotten away easy. It's the responsibility of that man or the bishop. We got away easy today. But I'd like to put that, uh, shift that responsibility to, uh, to the congregation. We know that Holy Scripture likens ma the marriage relationship to the relationship of Christ and the, uh, the marriage uh, relationship to the relationship of church and the Christ. The relationship of husbands and wives to the relationship of Christ and the church. Now, this relationship, I believe, with the bishop and the church, to a large degree, large degree, is like a marriage relationship. Yes, they are entrusted, they're brought together, and it is like a marriage relationship, as the, we read in Ephesians chapter 5, where Christ is the head, the man is responsible for the wife, and the wife is responsible to respond to the men. 
some, and I'd like to take some of out, out of marriage, marriage, and I do part of what I'd say I do, marriage counseling that I do, and um, just take some points out of that for those of you that I've counseled in marriage. You may say, yes, I've heard that before, but uh, many of you have, have not. When we look at marriage, the man to be, uh, man is called to be a priest or a preacher in the home to present the word of God. Yes, that is responsibility of us as men. And um, if the man tries to be, uh, uh, give leadership, spiritual leadership as a priest and a preacher in the home, if no one in the home, the wife and the family, don't pay attention to that, his leadership is in vain. It is very hard. It does not, not work. My friends, the bishop has a responsibility to preach and to teach, and you as a congregation have the responsibility to hear and to respond what is being taught to, to you. And um, if, uh, if we come here to church, yes, we come and maybe we don't really pay attention to what's being said. We think of what am I going to do tomorrow, where I'm going to do, what's my business or what's my work, and then all of a sudden, oh my, I forgot to pay my bill on Friday. I'll quickly do it on Monday. That's our thoughts during the time when the minister is preaching. His preaching will be in vain. And, uh, uh, and uh, it will not give God's blessing. God wants us as congregation to pay attention, to listen, and to put into practice what is being taught. And then secondly, my thought in marriage counseling is the husbands are to pray. Yes, the man, the minister, the preacher, the bishop, they have the responsibility to pray. And I know that responsibility to get up at night, spend an hour or two. Before the Lord. Interceding for our people. It's a great responsibility. Want to want to share, but we say the effectiveness of that prayer depends on how the husband at home will have the support of his wife and family. If the wife and family does not support, it seems as though those prayers they get so um, so uh, uh, so shallow, so vain. The bishop has a responsibility to pray. And um, to um, just about took two pages here. But the congregation is there to support the bishop in the prayer. The bishop prays with holy hand, or the congregation to lift up holy hands without fear and doubting. But if there's disrespect, disrespect and uh, negativeness against the bishop, the church will lead or lose its blessing. But then the next point, the man in the house is supposed to be a leader. The man can, and when I talk in marriage counseling, the man can only be a leader if there's somebody to follow. If the man walks alone, there's nobody following him, he's not a leader. And so it's also here that the bishop needs to, uh, through his leadership, people that follow. But I say to these young men that are contemplating marriage, your wife, now there's a thought beside, but your wife cannot follow you if you're standing still. This has nothing to do with the bishop or lecture, but I'd just like to throw that in. Ever tried following somebody that's standing still? Your wives are supposed to follow, but if you're standing still, it will be very hard. The bishop can only be a leader if the people or the congregation are willing to follow. Then, and he will lead them, that he will lead them to the Lord Jesus Christ and that they will be comforted and, and, uh, and lifted up, edified in the Lord Jesus. And I want to use this carefully. 
if, if according to God's word, that if they don't follow, then they will not be led to that what God wants them to. For the, and the next one, for the congregation to pray for the bishop. If you don't agree with the, with the bishop, don't go to the coffee shop or to wherever to discuss this. My friends, you as a congregation have a con- responsibility to go in your room, close the door, and on your knees with a Kleenex box beside you and bring it to the Lord. That's where you bring it. And God can give his blessing. But another one, Bishop is called, or the man in the house is called to be an example. And so this is also for the bishop to be an example. But not only an example, but an example that will be followed. If the bishop is the best example, and yet the people don't follow, what is the use of that example? My friends, the bishop should be, should be an example, but it is for the, the congregation to uh, accept that example, to live that example. And for closing, the time is going on. Could have some more here, but the bishop is a human. My friends, the bishop needs support. And another thought I'd like to leave you with you, and I want you to take it carefully, not to uh, twist it. But what the church is, uh, and what your bishop will be, what your church will be, and what your bishop will be, depends on how you will support him, how you will support that leadership in the church. And I know the church today, it comes from God, it's a blessing of God, but I want to use this as a leadership that leadership only goes as far as there's a uh, support from the congregation. I want you to take this carefully, not to mis- uh, twist it. And um, I want you us to remind that we go on prayer, pray for this election on Thursday, uh, no, I'm sorry, on Friday night, and um, that we'll... Uh, do this uh, prayerfully that God can use us to choose that man that he has chosen for this great responsibility, not a great uh, higher position, but for that great responsibility to take care, to give leadership for our souls, for my souls, for the souls of your children, for the souls of your friends. That God can keep on pouring his blessing, and that people will come to Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we come to you and we want to thank you for this day that you've given us, this opportunity you've given us. Father, we thank you for the blessing of the church, how you've blessed this church, how, what you've done. It is all your doing. It is your blessing, and we want to give you praise, honor, and glory for all the people that have come to you, people that have been saved, people that have been encouraged, people that have been lifted up, people that have found peace in you and health and strength. Father, we thank you for this. And Father, we pray now that you be with us as a church, that you guide us, direct us, especially in the election process for a bishop, that you give guidance and direction, that you choose that man that you, that you have for this service, and that you give that man the heart the responsibility to uh, take up that leadership for your honor and for your glory and for edification. Father, we thank you for our country. We thank you for the peace of our country. And Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And Father, we pray for your children of Israel that you bless them. Father, once again, we pray for guidance and direction, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.